ocean currents. What drives the ocean currents? Why some currents are warm, some cold? How they're affecting the planet climate? Let's talk about that. What is the ocean currents? If you think about any water body, and our Earth is covered with a lot of water, there will be the constant circulation of those waters. Even in your cup of tea, warmer fluxes of the water expanding, rising up, getting lighter. The water on the surface of the cup of tea cooling down, become denser, cooler, and it sinks down, pushing warmer water up faster again. You can imagine similar happening in the ocean on a bigger scale. Our Earth constantly rotating around the Sun and it's heating up differently. It depends on the latitudes and depends on the seasons. So we have warmer waters towards the equator and the cooler water of the ocean around the poles. As a result, this water starts mixing. So let's talk about main properties of these currents, how they formed and why. Since the name effects of the water in the ocean, very important ones will be the temperature, of course, and its salinity, so kind of like a composition of the water. So as more salts you have in the water, the more denser it's become. Denser, it means it's become heavier. With similar fact, if you're cooling down the water or warming up the water, the density changes as well. In the studies of the ocean currents, we call it thermohaline circulation. Haline means salt, thermo means temperature. So you have this effect of temperature and salinity affecting the ocean properties, and it's that drive the water to move. Another effect, you have Coriolis forces. Coriolis forces, it's the force which act from rotation of the Earth around this X. We have everything going a little bit clockwise in the Northern Hemisphere, in anti-clockwise Southern Hemisphere. You have the effect of the pressure in the atmosphere, precipitation, how much rain falls down, and how much ice forms in the water. It will affect salinity and the density of the water again, and will be to play part in thermohaline circulation. So let's have a look on the Earth. On this map, we see the main currents of the ocean. If you look at together with thermohaline circulation, one big conveyor belt of the mixing of the water in the ocean, they almost mix match each other. And we have a particular patterns we preserve for many thousands of years with the current continent position and the bathymetry or the topography of the ocean, which causing this movement of the water. When you think about the ocean, it warms up from the surface. So we have warmer waters heating up by the sun. And obviously, if I ask you this question, where will be the warmer waters, you will tell me around the equator. And it's absolutely true. Around the equator and tropical areas, we have the warmest waters in the ocean. This water warms up, a lot of rain falling down in tropical area. It changes salinity, make it a little bit fresher. And as a result, water start move. Obviously, warmer water start move towards Northern Pole and towards Antarctica, Southern Pole. By the time it moves, it will be a little bit directed by exposition of the continents. If you look in the Atlantic Ocean, we have the big current coming towards Central America, heating off the east coast of South of Northern America, and then moves through Atlantic towards Northern Europe. We we'll call it Gulf Stream. In the thermohaline circulation, it's the main current of the warmer waters, then going up all the way till the northern Atlantic. On the way, it brings warmer temperatures and more rain to the Europe, make it climate more temperate and warmer than climates on the similar latitudes in other places. When it reaches the cold northern regions, the water cools down on the way. It's become already not as hot. The ice starts forming in the winter seasons which increase salinity of the water because when you form the ice, the salt not become part of the ice. It's left on the surface of the ocean. And as a result, colder and more salty waters become denser and they sunk down towards the bottom. These thick layers of the colder, denser water start moving back south. It's compensate for those waters that move from south towards the north, the warmer waters we talked about and it's kind of compensate. So we have this undercurrent underneath of the ocean at the bottom, which go in the opposite direction of the warmer Gulf Stream, warmer stream going north. As a result, all this colder water is going all the way down till equator. On the way, it will start slightly warming up. But because it's located in the bottom of the ocean, 
it will be very hard to warm it up through. You can imagine to warm up through three, four, five thousand meters of water. You have this warmer current and surface, and you have colder waters underneath. Usually they not mix very well there. These colder waters reach till Antarctica, and then they join all this circumference, big current around Antarctica continent. You can see on the map, it's the biggest big current, which move eastward all around Antarctica. Then some of the waters will branch off towards the Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean, where it'll be entrained by this replacement of the water waters, which constantly going away from the equator, and will be driven up towards the equator. In the places we call the water will come towards the surface, we we'll call them upwelling areas. We'll have the transition of this colder, densier bottom layers into the surface warmer layers of the water. You can see on the map where this is happening. And usually, you know, these places by very rich ocean life. For example, a lot of nutrition be brought with the colder waters. Plankton will love that area, so there'll be a lot of plankton. And where there's a lot of plankton, there'll be numerous lives, fishes, mammals, and birds. If you're a fisherman, you know those areas, because that's the places where people fishing mostly. Then these warmer waters will become on surface of the colder layers, and they will continue the circle back down from equator warmer areas towards the poles. If you look in the map of the Thermohaline circulation, that's the main conveyor belt. It's moving through the cycle of the waters and it might take about one half thousand years for water to travel through all of the oceans and finish the cycle. Therefore, although it seems like our oceans are separate on the surface of the planet, four main oceans, they do mix, but just slowly and gradually with time. So the ocean body around the planet work as a cooling mechanism. So it's constantly moving the warmer waters from the equator towards the north. At the same time, it's also preserve the heat that collected through the seasons by the ocean and then very slowly release it, making our uh, temperature on the planet's surface more temperate. Watch my other videos about Mars and Moon, where we talked about how just the land much faster heat up through the warmer periods and release the heat very fast due to the density. Water, as a result, work as a cover for the, our planet, is the atmosphere as well, which effectively redistribute the heat throughout. And for us, for people, it works as a natural heaters. And if you look on the ocean current map, after you understand thermohaline circulation, the main conveyor belt of the ocean waters in a global ocean, you see that it's related to that, but we just have some local branches out when smaller currents coming out from the main thermohaline currents, and they will affect locally the climate of particular areas of the planet. For example, Gulf Stream, the biggest and the most famous warm current of the water in the northern Atlantic, it's related to thermohaline warmer current coming all the way up from South Atlantic till the north. And you have some compensation currents going in opposite directions with opposite temperature. You have to. If you bring the big current of the warmer water in one place, the cold water will have to leave that place. Some currents will be shifting northwise or southwise, depending on the seasons, and they become less strong or more prominent as well. However, they stay like that for some time. We know through the climate studies, paleoclimatology, that some currents been there for a long time, for thousands of years with us. However, for example, during the last quaternary period, glaciations affected some of the currents. When you have increase of glaciers on the planet, less water become in the ocean, some lands get exposed, coasts, ocean become saltier because of all fresh water trapped in the ice you will have particular patterns of the ocean circulation. When you start melting rapidly all those glaciers, big flux of the fresh water coming from the continents down into the ocean, the fresh water from the continents coming from the glaciers will not straight away mix with denser salty water of the ocean, which you're already underneath. And as a result, there will be some readjustments happening, which paleoclimatologists study, and eventually the ocean currents will restabilize find new patterns, and we see the modern picture of the currents. Therefore, you can see that the global ocean patterns will affect the local climates for the land, bringing warmer air or colder air. For example, as we already mentioned, 
Western Europe and England in particular warmer places in comparison with North America, same latitude, because of the warm effect of the Gulf Stream. We have more rain, warmer air coming from the ocean, and dominated western winds. If you look in the eastern Pacific, all the west coast of South America, it's in particular colder than, for example, in comparison with other areas in the same latitude. Why? Because we have this cold current coming from Antarctica. Even the famous the desert located in western part of South America is there because of dry and cold air coming from the Pacific, heated by the cold Peruvian current coming from South Antarctica, northwise towards the equator. Similarly, you have upwelling areas with a lot of rich life located. For example, famous Galapagos, northwise from that area, flush with the life. Sea mammals, birds, plankton, and numerous fishes. Just next time when you look on the global ocean map, have a look on the land as well and think what could be the effect of the ocean currents on particular geography of that places. We will talk about particular effects of currents on particular areas and on the climate through the times in future videos.